Okay, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Lucy's Paradise Podcast. Um, today's actually a really exciting day. So we have Nick Zaborski with us today. And I'm really excited about you coming on here and talking about what you do. So I guess my first question for you is, who are you and what do you do? Oh, well, well first, I should congratulate you on this podcast. <laughs> I think, I mean, it took a lot of guts to, to start this, and it's it's very ambitious, you know, Thank and, you. and uh, inspiring. Yeah, I think you're destined to have a podcast. I ran into you at the gym the other day, and, you know, you got my whole uh, life story out of me. I normally don't talk to anybody um, at the gym, you know, in my own in my own world. But, yeah, you, yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, you're very good um, conversationalist. So, yeah, I think you're Thank destined you. to do this. Thank you. Appreciate um, that. Uh, so, so who am I? What do I do? Um, I don't know. How much do you want to know? You want the whole origin story or? We could, we could do like um, just like a, a quick overview. So like a little bit of like your history of like what makes you you. And then, sure. yeah, kind oh, of well. what got into, what got you into what you do now? Because no, I think people are going to find it really interesting once we start diving into what it actually is. Sure, sure. Um, well, um, you know, I started off as a, just a kid from Wisconsin, from a small town. Um, I was always really attracted to the water. I mean, that that's who I am. I'm a man of man of the sea, I guess, you know, I always was, even if it was just a little pond or even a, a ditch full of water in Wisconsin, I was always just really drawn to it. Um, got to spend my summers on a lake, um, my family cabin, and that was the, the center of my universe. Okay. Uh, That's when cool. I was growing up, it, it always was, or still is. Um, then I was, uh, I think it was about kindergarten. I went to California for a family wedding, saw the ocean, um, and that was it. You know, I ran out of the car and just stopped and stared at it. And I was like, this is what I'm going to do with my life. I don't know wow. what, but it's got something to do with, with this big the exploration, big water, or something watery of, thing right here. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Um, and then, uh, you know, nothing against Wisconsin. I love it. I love being back there, um, seeing my family. It's a great place, but it's just not for me. Um, I heard the cheese there is great, right? Cheese is out of this world. <laughs> yeah. The cheese is amazing. Um, my aunt just gave me this awesome bag of cheese when I was back there, and I left it in my dad's fridge. I'm so mad. Oh no! I, I, we could have had it right here, right now. But oh yeah, I they should. It. They should ship us some. They should ship us some. You know what? You hear that? Yeah. Ship us some. <laughs> ship us. <laughs> we need Wisconsin cheese now. It's it's as good as they say, but um, yeah. So I figured like the best way to get out of Oshkosh, Wisconsin, was to join the Navy, and there's a pretty good chance I'd end up by the water. Right. Right. Um, I wasn't wrong. Um, yeah, I, I came. I come from a Navy family. Um, dad is a sailor. Granddad, great granddad, and I always grew up hearing all the um, stories. All the stories. Yeah. All the stories of Hawaii. Um, oh wow! A family history in Hawaii that goes back more oh, than a wow. hundred years, and so I think my uh, my destiny was was set, you know, very mm -hmm. early. So wow. joined the Navy. Ended up. Um, being, you know, working on airplanes here. This is how old I am. I actually was stationed at Barbers Point, <laughs> um, dating myself. But um, yeah, Barbers Point, Kaneohe Marine Corps Base. And then um, I was out in Diego Garcia, a little island in the Indian Ocean. Mm -hmm. um, ran into some Navy divers. You know, I was, I was big into free diving and, right, and right. scuba diving uh, on the side and met these guys and just thought like, you know what? I could do that. I think I could... I think I could do what these guys are doing. And then the, um, I don't know if you remember the Ahimi Maru um, mm -hmm. incident when the USS Greenville hit oh, um, the oh. Japanese fishing boat. Yeah, so so when you met those guys, though, I, I kind of want to talk about that. That it sounds like it, it's like a one of those important moments in your life that kind of changed the course of your life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, yeah, what, what, what kind of divers were they? Uh, they were Navy divers from here at Hickam. Oh, okay, uh, okay. Mobile diving, salvage unit one. And, oh, wow. You know, they just had such a cool job. They got to run around wearing shorts. and They were telling you about it. and Yeah, you know, all the all the girls on the island that would never give any of us the time of day were like, oh, the Navy divers are here. Like, oh, okay, <laughs> okay, and, uh, okay, it just, okay. It was just like, oh, they were celebrities. They have the right. coolest job. I They're see, working I on see, these I little see. boats. They're diving. And it's just like, man, those guys are cool. So, okay, like, okay. I want to I do that. So, like, yeah, that, so the optics back then with that was like, you're like, 
like, dang, I kind of want to be like that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I, and then you love the ocean already. I admired so. those guys, but also I was like, that's what I should be doing. Right, you know, I right, can, right. I can do that. Right. And then and then when the Himi Maro happened, um, very shortly thereafter, I felt like, you know, I really should do this. This is, this is um, you know, a national crisis. You right. know, uh, it was on the world world stage mm-hmm. and it's happening in our backyard right. and I just felt like you know I should have I should really be a part of that I kind of felt like I missed the boat on that particular um, historical event and that motivated me even more to, to be a part uh, of something maybe down the line mm-hmm. I see okay mm-hmm. so that's interesting that you also said that you have like a family lineage um, with Hawaii because I mean, I didn't, I didn't know that, obviously. I mean, we didn't get that deep into your life story, but that's really cool. So, like, how far back, how many family members do you have that have lived here? Uh, well, my kids are now fifth generation to live in Hawaii. Wow, that's cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, goes back to 1920s. Dang. Family here in 1920s. That's awesome. Yeah. So you have a lot of family. That's really cool. I like that because I, I feel like <clears throat> that even more so that's kind of why like you have that that ownership of the island in terms of like that situation that happened. Oh, 100%. Yeah. So so now with with that, so in, in this that point of your life, you're like, OK, yeah, I want to I want to do this. So tell me about like your business specifically and like how you got started doing that. Uh, yeah. Jumping ahead. So yeah, jumping ahead a as, little bit. But yeah. I ended up as a Navy diver and did my entire career um, military diving based out of here, but, you know, around the world, but I was based here. Okay. And then um, got out. I, my last tour was, um, was in Pearl City at the, the Naval Special Warfare Unit there. And I, I mean, I really just gave it, I just gave it all I had, you know, I was kind of, kind of burnt out, you know, I, um, I was going to grab Nobu. I, uh, I just wanted to get away from diving, didn't want anything to do with diving, didn't want anything to do with the military. Um, I was like, I'm just going to... Wait, you were sick of the military? That's crazy. No, yeah. Can you believe it? Yeah. <laughs> How could you be sick of the military? No, it's... It's the best. It's, it's a, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I've never heard... Ever, never met anybody that's had that experience before. But, you know, I just gave it everything I had, and then um, I think I needed... I just needed to get away from it. I needed to step mm-hmm. away and restore myself and Mm -hmm. after doing that um i found that in the military i always had that sense of purpose even though i may not have been aware of it Mm -hmm. until maybe maybe the end yeah you're kind of caught up in so much um of the high tempo you know i don't know if most people really pause and realize what they're the grander purpose is behind it all right right because you feel like such a little like blimp Yes. And then you're doing so many other things. And then, you, yeah, I, I see what you're saying. And then you, you kind of stop and you're like, wait, I'm actually part of this like bigger thing. Because if something goes down in the world, like. Yeah, you're just a replaceable cog in a giant mechanism. Yeah, but, that's one, way, that's one but, way to look at it. Yeah. But really, though, I wasn't. I was in charge of the safety of a lot of guys, mm-hmm. you know, and and as you get out of the military and a lot of things fade out of importance you know, awards and, you know, uh, position. And yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, for me, um, yeah, with the, with the whole military thing, I mean, I was definitely ready to like move on. You had a really stressful job. Yeah. I had a really um, stressful job, but very high tempo, yeah, high perf- level of performance. And yeah, I think it's also like a different, um, perspective being in, um, not just like, and I don't want to like be like, oh yeah, it's a man's world, you know what I mean? Because there's a lot of like really amazing females in the military that like make it look super easy. But for sure, I think that there is such a level of like pressure already being a female. And then like I'm not only competing with the females, I'm competing with all the males, mm-hmm. and especially because you know in my line of work, because I did like special reaction team stuff, and that's like so much constant pressure. Like, and then I already put so much pressure on myself, so it was a lot. Yeah, I was yeah, definitely. Well, you ready said to you put on. it on yourself. I th- I think a lot of females do put that on themselves. Mm-hmm. You know, they feel like I'm a I'm a female, so I have to be twice as you know twice as good, and have to work out you know an extra hour more than everyone else. And yeah, maybe I see that I see that a lot. But um, yeah, 
I do have to give a shout out to all my, you know, female Navy divers that I know. They're that's I've been nothing but crazy. impressed with them. Yeah, that's that sounds nuts. Yeah, they're so. Yeah, I've been nothing but nothing but impressed. I, I mean, females in general in the military. Like, you know, I grew up around you know Vietnam era guys that, you know, I I heard. The things and you know and uh, coming yeah. from the the men around me, you know, females don't belong in the military. And, right. You know when I so I was parodying <clears throat> that when I was just a ignorant young kid, and then I got in the military. I remember my first school that I went to, um, and I saw who was coming after hours and helping the students that were struggling, and mm. you know I saw the people that the instructors that were compassionate, actually focusing on their job, which was to teach and get you know, get these people across the finish line. Yeah. And that was the female instructors, you know. Um, yeah. The male instructors seemed to be more um, interested in impressing upon the the new guys how much of a sailor they are and, hmm. and how I'm up here and you're down here. Yeah, a little bit of, yeah. Well, I think, too, like, that, that, that way of thinking is, like, not even really common anymore, I don't think, you know. It's, like, such outdated, like, thinking. It is. It thinking. absolutely is. Um, and then as we all grow and evolve as people, like, I, f I think that like now how the world is now is just so different. Like, um, you see the value in, in different people and, you know, and it's just a silly thing to like care about, you know, like, for, for sure. But I, I instantly noticed the, the value of, of females in the military. I mean, right away, you know, which is in contrast to everything I, I heard in the world mm -hmm. around me. I mean, it was very apparent what, what value they brought to me as right, an 18-year-old right, right. kid. And then um, serving with, you know, female divers, like, holy cow, they're, they're awesome. There's a few of them I'm actually trying to hire. Um, I remember this girl, actually, well, she's a woman. I, I, I was one of the ones that endorsed her going to, to dive school. Mm -hmm. um, name's Kim. Shout out to Kim Carver. But then she, uh, when she was working at Pearl Harbor, um, this funny story about her, like how tough she is. She she steps off the um, the wall, and there's a little piece of concrete jutting out. And she hit her elbow on it when when she stepped off into the water. Boom! Like hits her arm, mm -hmm. and the soup was like, "Hey, you know, are you are you okay? Are you okay?" She's like, "Yeah, yeah, I'm fine, I'm fine." And then uh, her job was to go put up a grate on a submarine. Okay. Which is really hard to do with two people. Um, not only really takes two people. She it's almost impossible with one unless you're really good. Wow. Uh, she goes and does it by herself end of the day gets this like you know 200 pound grade up and then comes up out of the water and it's like um all right diver on deck diver okay job's done uh, my arm's broke i need to go to the hospital oh my god <laughs> and that's like, insane yeah as a as a diving supervisor you have to have to scold her a little bit like hey if right, I right. ask you because if you're okay I, I, you have to be honest yeah you, you, you didn't give me this the correct status but right. in her eyes she was like what private, am I going to do? Not do it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Privately. You know, you had to be like, hey, don't do that. But then privately, everybody's like, dude, that was awesome. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Could I do wow. that? I don't know. Yeah. But I, uh, yeah, I actually tried to hire her. That's, and she's that's crazy. She has kids now and told me to kick rocks. She's not interested. <laughs> but um, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll wear her down and tell me to kick to come rocks. Back. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Yeah. That's hilarious. Oh, but yeah, going back to your original question, starting the company. Um, yeah. Yeah, I... I you know, my, my sense of purpose when I was in the military was, like, keeping the guys safe. That yeah, was it. Yeah. Um, that became clear to me as I was getting out. And you're like, hey, what is this all for? You know, and then you think, well, heck, I got to make it to retirement. I get to go enjoy my life now. I get to go do what I want. You know, I, I, I got to the right. finish line. But what does that mean, right? Um, for me, it means making sure everyone else gets to also you know i mean we all know people that don't have that yeah privilege yeah they don't definitely they don't get to, so without going too much into that but yeah i yeah. mean that's really what it's all about to me at the end of the day it's like yeah I, I took place in you know i took part in things that you know i'm proud of and i took part in things that i take issue with and it but that's not our job as service members you know we're we're just there to influence our circle yeah and the, the guys that you know whose safety was my charge you know i did the best i could to keep them keep them alive and and that was what i that's what kept me that's what got me out of bed in the morning even mm -hmm. if i didn't always realize it
So when you get out of the military, you know, for people that I, I could advise that are getting out, um, we're wired differently. So don't, Mm -hmm. don't think that you're going to just walk away from things and get an easy job. You know, as a Walmart. (laughs) I have an easy job. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you have an easy job, but But. you're, you're fighting on the weekends. You're, um, yeah, yeah. You're doing a podcast. You're trying to make Hawaii better. You're, you're, (laughs) you're not exactly just resting on your laurels and taking. That's true. That's true. I mean, look what we're doing right now. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is very ambitious. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks for proving my point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess so. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think, yeah, the purpose in life is really important. And I think that, you know, for me, like I definitely struggled with like anxiety and depression. I mean, I always am always forever going to struggle with anxiety, but the depression part, I realized when I was younger, you know, I think it had more to do with besides a possible chemical imbalance. Cause I was like growing up, I think that when you don't have a purpose or you don't really understand or maybe try to find your purpose that can lead you astray a little bit, you know, people, people start getting lost and things like that until they end up getting into something that, that, that helps them find that. Um, I've been fortunate that like throughout my life, I kind of went with the flow a little bit and I just tried to like be guided by my intuition. And I've had friends that just like suggested I do things and I just did it just Mm -hmm. to like see. And then I end up, I'm now I'm like very thankful I did that because I feel like it did contribute to like the overall picture, you know, so life experience. Yeah. Yeah. So with you, like, you kind of, you got out, you're like, okay, now I know kind of what I want to do. Um, so tell me, tell me more specifically about what, what you actually do. So, um, in, in an attempt to separate myself from all things military and, and diving yeah. and, um, right. I, I mean, cause you're to, still diving, but right. I moved, I moved to Tennessee. Uh, my family moved the family out there, you know, bought a, boat a truck and a dog and thought I would just fly fish for the rest of my life in the Smoky Mountains and then after um after a few months I feel like those are the steps you know you're like all right I'm out boat dog it was yeah it was like check check um but it's like here I am in this beautiful place um you know I got everything I wanted it's like I I planned for this and I made this happen it's like what why am I what's this inner turmoil like I should be so happy right now um you know I felt I felt antsy and unfulfilled and I Mm -hmm. felt that depression coming back. You know, it's exactly the same as when I was a teenager. I struggled with depression. And I think the key for me is, is to use it. You know, I I love my depression. I love it because it makes me have to stay out ahead of it. And when I stay ahead of it, you know, I have to be somewhat of an overachiever. Mm relatively speaking I see, yeah you know? I, I get what you're saying and then um, it's interesting it it's makes an interesting me, way to look at it it makes me do more that i would normally do. i'm not gonna say i love my depression <laughs> i don't think I i'd ever say that <laughs> um i it's i love it it fuels me because I'll, I'll stay out ahead of it and i'll achieve more and then by doing more adventurous um you know out of the box things i end up ultimately being happier yeah. than the guy yeah. who's just happy to work at a bait shop you know and hang out. I'm, I'm envious of that guy. You know, I'm envious of people that can, can, um, just kind of kick back and enjoy life. And I'm never going to, I'm never going to be like that. I'm always going to have to keep staying out ahead and, and accomplishing well, I think, things. Yeah, but, I, I think there but are, I think those guys are kind of envious of people. Of, yeah. Of, you know. Yeah. Yeah. They're envious of people like us. And I, and, the, and the reason I categorize us like that is because I really do think that I'm like that too. Um, I, I, I always tell people, and that's why like my motto is like legends only, is because I can't, I can't, and I have never been able to settle for like mediocrity and I just can't. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm not, I'm not like even judging anyone that can, you know, like you said, work at a bake shop and be totally content. I'm jealous of those people be, because I, yeah. I can't be like that either. Like I'm never content. Like I feel like I always have to like be doing something to be better or like be doing something to gain more skills. And like, I, I don't know, for me, it's like a never ending thing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You, you said it in fewer words than I could have. Yeah. You nailed it. Yeah. Yeah. But ultimately, ultimately the result is, is great and I'm, I'm okay with it. That's interesting because it's like, well, you, you stayed in the military up until you retired 
And but it's interesting that you were saying that like your family's a whole Navy family because like I kind of had the like similar experience, but my entire family is like Army. So right, I had right. my uncles like my uncle went to Desert Storm. I had un- you know uncles that are sergeant majors and. You know, I mean, I was a kid looking at a book of dead bodies from, and my mom would get mad because like, my uncle, why are you showing her that? But I was so into that stuff. Right, right. And I just wanted to hear all the stories. And like, I, lo- I thought my uncles were so great. And um, it's interesting because from my perspective, right? Like I'm a little, little, little tomboy, little girl talking to my uncles. And from my perspective, now having the army, like I felt so army influenced, 100%. Like all they would do is talk, you know, bad about other branches and like and right, you know right. when you get older you realize it's not that's not really a thing like you know because uh, it's um, <clears throat> some of my best friends are like in the marines and the navy and all that like it's not really a thing it's just like a fun rivalry yeah there's 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 love behind it you know yeah oh yeah for yeah. sure yeah but it's interesting because it's like you had almost the same thing but yours was like navy and mine was like army yeah, so 100%, 100%. that's hilarious and then my brother went to west point so oh, I have a, no. yeah, I have a brother that um, graduated from West Point. So one of my really early childhood memories, actually, when I was eight years old, this was in 1997, I was at his West Point graduation. And the first thing I, one of the first things I ever remember is seeing all the hats be thrown in the air. At his yeah, West you told Point me about that. One of your very core, core memories yeah. was like seeing all the, that's so like to when me, you came like, online, that was, was like, that was, yeah, that was like what the military was in my mind like the these these cool interesting memories and stuff and so yeah. now realizing that like okay that was great because my brother graduated from a military academy he didn't enlist in the <laughs> army two totally different things but i think it was it's great because i have one side of perspective and so does my brother so it's really cool and then he ended up doing 20 years so when he got out i got in oh oh very cool yeah. what's yeah. he what's he doing now your brother um, he lives in Colorado, and he... Beautiful place. I think he's like a ROTC instructor out there. Oh, yep. very cool. Yeah, he has... Good, so he's still still serving, still... Mm-hmm. still Doing involved. his own thing. Yep, yeah, still working. Yeah, drives a Tesla, living life. Heck yeah. yeah Colorado is such life. a nice place. I love, I love Colorado. Yeah, it's really cool. I went there actually for the first time, finally. Um, oh, did you? To what, go visit. What part? Um, so he lives out there, and then um, they live between Canyon City and Denver. Mm-hmm. They have two houses out there. So I was able to like um, see see both of their houses and and go spend time with my family and I really liked it out there. It was really beer is like four dollars, so I was yeah. like hell yeah. And then the elevation's higher, so you get more yeah, more exactly. drunk. So I was having a good time. I was like yeah, let's go. Cool. I spent I was um, eating and drinking out there. Yeah, you can. They do the growler thing out there in Colorado. Go get your growler filled up. What's that? Oh, I it's like that. it's like a maybe that's like a North Pacific Northwest kind of thing. Hmm. It's like a little jug you can bring into the bar like your own oh. little mini keg and they fill it oh, up cool. Yeah. okay well my goal is this winter to go out there and like go snowboard and then go visit them again oh, okay. so that's my goal i spent a fair amount of the summer before i went in the navy um in boulder and i remember seeing all those awesome concerts at red rocks like all the cool 90s grunge bands because I'm super old and yeah, the yeah. Grateful That's Dead so cool. and Fish like, were out there I'm it's jealous like awesome summer you know before I, 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 I that's the one thing I, I wish is I could go if I could go back in time I would go to like all of those concerts like I was, in the I was 70s there. and 80s good. and I might have met, like not gone to Woodstock because that sounded pretty traumatic but <laughs> my cousin um, my cousin Kathy I'm so the one whose wedding I went to in San Diego when I saw the ocean for the first time she was telling me that she saw Bob Marley in San Diego oh, back in the sure. 80s. I'm so jealous. Yeah, if I had wow. a time machine, it would be like, go see the Doors when they're a little little band in Venice right. Beach. Right, when they're like, like not as seasoned. Um, yeah. I, I didn't get to see, obviously, Bob Marley because he's passed away. R.I.P. Bob. But um, I saw his um, son. Ziggy. And, yeah, I think it was... I think it was Ziggy. It was either, I don't remember, Damien but was um, it was one of them. I was yeah. still, I'll, clearly I was smoking weed back then, but um, <laughs> I don't even remember which Bob Marley, which Marley brother I saw. But um, I, that's probably a But I was lot. working at a gym in San Francisco and our boss took us to the concert. So like, I was like, shoot, free concert tickets and then we can, like, I'm down. And it was like one of the best concerts I've ever been to. So awesome. I think if you remember the entirety of a, of a uh, Marley concert, you probably did something wrong so. well i think the thing about music too is really the feeling you get it's not so much you know so 
Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm the last person anyone should give a time machine to. I will, I will use it <laughs> poorly. <laughs> change history. Change all the I'm history. not changing history. I'm going to concerts. So. <laughs> going I'm going to concerts. use it for my own selfish uh, purposes. Yeah, yeah. But um, fast forward, and then you're like the lead singer of The Doors. Like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, what's that movie? Hot Tub Time Machine. Yeah, where he yeah, goes yeah. Back and, like, I love that movie. <laughs> yeah, I love that movie. <laughs> he, he, like, assumes Vince Neil's life. That's so funny. That's hilarious. <laughs> Oh, man, we totally got off topic, but it's fine. Oh, my God, jeez. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay, though. The biggest digression in uh Yeah, in now we're going to get sad. No, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, I do want to talk about, so... Circling back to the circling, start of the company? Circling keep... back to that, but, like, because when I, when I first talked to you, and we talked we talked for, like, over an hour, and we kind of dove a little bit into what it was that you you did, and I thought it was interesting because... Being able to dive and explore the ocean is one thing. And then being someone that like is actually either doing things like like what you can like like let's just say someone's boat, you know, gets sunk underwater. Like you basically are able to like go and like get it, right? Yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. Um, so aside from that, I mean that's like a simple explanation, right? Of like a part of what you can do. What are other like things that you can explore for? Um well, I've never, I never really got into the, the treasure hunting aspect of diving. Dang it. Um, no Titanic money for me. <laughs> I, know. I mean, I, maybe someday I will, but I know I would, I would lose my mind in mm. that, in that field. I, it's like, I would get so addicted to it. Um, oh, 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 okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I would maybe someday, but, um, I mean, what I, what I find, what I've been finding is, um, well, quick story. I was, I was, uh screening the material that we recovered mm -hmm. on the side of a boat in Denmark last year. And that's an old fishing boat, mm -hmm. you know, putts by and this, this old, he looked like an old European fisherman out of like general casting. I mean, just like exactly what you would imagine that guy yeah, looked yeah. like who's been fishing in the Baltic his whole life. And you know, I'm digging through the, the, uh, the material. And, uh, he's like, did you find any gold? And it's like, and I said, did you find any I said, uh, I said, yeah, it's gold. It's gold to some. So, yeah, what I do find is, you know, gold or better than gold or depends on who you ask. Right, right, right. So going back to the what it is that I do. Um, so a good buddy of mine, you know, shout out to Sack, um, you know, um, one of my best friends. Uh, good dude. He was going through the exact same thing that I was, you know, called him up and I'm like, man, are you, are you happy? And he's like, man, what, I need a mission. Let's I need make a, a business. I need a purpose. <laughs> <laughs> I need a purpose in life. It's like, oh my God, me too. It's like, why, why am I so miserable? Like it should be the greatest time of our lives. Yeah. So he, um, he joined team Rubicon, which okay. is like a disaster relief, um, organization that has a military esque structure. Oh wow. Okay. So it started by a, a recon Marine. So they'll they'll go into an area and they'll deploy people out to mm -hmm. disaster zone in a in a military like structure. Wow. And they'll but it'll be like, you know, instead of, you know, uh light infantry and mortar men, it's like right, drywall right. guy, electrician, you know, mold mold specialist, you know. Oh, okay. Um, interesting. So they'll they'll go up to a, a house, um What is their mission? Yeah. Is to just do restoration. You know, oh, some okay, okay. some old lady in a farm field is flooded it. her house out and they'll just Come That's in, cool. rip the rip the drywall out, and get all the furniture out, and dry the house out, rebuild it, and just get the house, like save people's homes. How do they make money doing that? They don't. It's a nonprofit. It's all. Um, well, nonprofits make a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of tax breaks, but um, yeah, a lot of That's, tax that's breaks. a whole other topic. Well, if, but okay, so they do it. If I could ever figure as... out how to monetize, it would be different. But no, it's um, yeah, not not in my experience, but um. Yeah, so they're 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 pretty big and it's it's all privately funded and they do amazing things and and he got he went off into that world doing um, Team Rubicon, Team Rubicon along a couple cool. missions. I volunteered for the sheriff's department dive team in uh, Tennessee, oh, Bob okay. County. So I got into law enforcement diving. Oh um, wow! Marine Marine rescue and uh, recovery. So so that so that's interesting because obviously you're not in law enforcement but you team up with them to be able to because you have the special skills mm -hmm. to dive. So they, they use me as the as the training guy because mm. of my background. They're like, "Okay, you're going to you're going to basically run dive training." 
Wow, that's really for the, for the helpful. Venting, so. And then you can actually train up what, like, is is the whole point, like, you train up military person or sorry police personnel to be able to like do well, that or does it not necessarily have to be it was it was like um paramedics and firefighters and mm, okay law enforcement guys okay that um that were on call you know i would train them on diving safety and those sort of things and different procedures that's cool um i'd like to get more into diving you should yeah because i'm not scared of the ocean or anything I mean, you so. live in Hawaii. Look out, look out your window. Yeah, I mean, well, my business partner's a ex-Navy SEAL, so, like, we'll go diving all the time. Like, we'll mm. go swimming and stuff together and snorkeling, whatever. Um, and I feel really safe doing that with him because if anything happens, like, he's, like, the one person that would probably save my life or whatever, right? I'm sure. And he's so comfortable in the water, like, you could just tell. And I feel like I've become even just a better swimmer and diver just observing, like, how he does things. So it's really cool. One time I thought he was swimming by, but it was a big ass manatee or something i don't know what it was here in hawaii yeah probably we, a monk, we, monk seal monk seal or something yeah, yeah we, we were really at uh curious. we were at uh electric beach and i thought it was oh, him monk seal. monk seal for sure and the thing was fucking huge and i was like oh my god <laughs> how big um, is he Jeez. um well my business partner is about your size but um the thing was fat and huge and i you know it was in my peripheral so i was just right, like oh well. that's just him and then i looked and i'm like oh my god that's definitely not him that is not a human being monk seals can be scary when they they're, they they're emerge huge. out of the edge of visibility because they they kind of are shark shaped huge you know yeah. when you just see and them i'm, on I'm the definitely edge. not afraid of like creatures and stuff but when you're like oh okay i thought that was my friend and that, that's definitely not yeah it things, freaked me out things pop out of the ocean and surprise you yeah. I know the feeling, so. um, what things I have humpback, popped out at you? I've had um, humpback whales uh, go by me. It's Those for me. It's huge. it's scarier than being around sharks. I don't know because you just feel so yeah. small and so insignificant. Yeah. And um, when they're when they're talking to each other, it hurts. Like when you you, know, you can hear them from miles and miles away, but when they're real close to you, it kind of rattles your oh rattles interesting your guts, you know, and like the, yeah yeah like the inner, waves your or inner something. Ear, the bones oh. in your in your ears. That sounds, yeah, just you feel the crazy. yeah the the sonar, I guess, uh, just kind of going through your body. And just, Interesting. It's like shooting a fifty cal. Yeah, yeah, too many yeah. Times like you're like oh, I kind of yeah, yeah, feel yeah. a little sick. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, I'd be more afraid of that for sure because they're huge. Yeah, you don't. They could just swallow you. They don't get out of your your way like you get out of theirs, and they're just massive. That's crazy. Yeah, I had a really cool moment. Um, I was wasn't in the water but like these three whales came and i was looking off the side of my boat to see you know them come out the other side and i saw two and then i was just looking like where's the third and then it was like in um the tom hanks movie with wilson or whatever <laughs> like uh when the whale away yes yeah, thank you when the whale um uh you know comes out and the eyeball yeah, phew, that, that, that moment in, yeah, the, in the movie exhales and then i, I turn around and, like i had this moment where the whale and i just sat there and Oh. Stared at each other. That was right off of, right out there. As a matter of fact, oh. right off of um, Honolulu. So he like made eye contact with you. Yeah, like, we just kind of like or... were curious with each other. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, it was really neat. That's just life in Hawaii. You know things. Yeah. Things like that things happen wink, here. Whales winking at you. Just <laughs> yeah, just hanging out with a whale. <laughs> that's crazy. But uh, boy, we. I've heard a lot of sea stories because my friend like has a boat and like goes out to sea all the time and. He, I don't know if he's like crazy or if I believe him because I feel like I'm like, I'm, I'm just really interesting. Maybe, like I, maybe both. <laughs> I'm very open-minded. So like, and I think maybe too, like I want to believe people, but also I think that I can kind of tell like who's a liar and who's not. Mm -hmm. So I think that's why like I end up believing them. Cause I'm like, like, why would you lie about that? Anyway, but, but one of my friends has told me like really like far-fetched stories about like dolphins and stuff. And I actually kind of want to get him on here to like talk about it. People are going to think he's nuts, but like, I really believe him. Like he's had like interesting and, and, and interesting stories about like feeling like he was like kind of trapped in like a loop, like in time, like being out there in sea, like almost like hours went by, but like he didn't go anywhere. And he was like, that's weird. Like I was just sailing in one direction for so long that he like feels like he just went in circles he and he that. actually tracks like his routes and was like, what the hell happened for like that two hours? Vertigo. I, guess I don't know. Vertigo, weird, weird stuff. I don't know. It was really interesting. So I don't know. Yeah. Solitude and all that serenity will, will do weird things to your mind. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
I, I like to I like to hunt and I'll just go by myself. Like um, I'll go spend a week in Lanai, you know, bow hunting. And yeah. after about day three, when you're um, you haven't talked to anybody in a few days, like things start to come you out. You go back to civilization. Well, I mean, when you're by yourself, you, you just weird things start to bubble out of you. You know, mm. old memories, and you get very introspective, and that's kind of part of the experience. You yeah, know, don't start... do too much of that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, um, another thing that. Another weird thing where where you would get where I get really introspective, I guess, was one of the coolest things, one of the coolest moments in the Navy was sitting on the back of the submarine when I was in the SEAL team. Is you you know you're waiting for the mini sub to come back and the divers are out on the deck, mm -hmm. um, or sitting inside this little shelter that would receive the the mini sub, and um, the sub is just flying through the water you know, at night. And a lot of times it would, um, disturb the bioluminescent algae. Mm. So, you know, in like star Wars where they hit, um, warp speed and the stars, yeah, well, yeah, it's yeah. like that, but That's backwards. What it looks like. Yeah. yeah it's yeah. just like all That's these, cool. you're just flying backwards in space and, you know, just eight hours of just staring you're into just the, like, yeah, into the crazy. void and watching this bioluminescent algae that looks like you're in a, and you know, flying through space. Yeah, you just feel like you're on mushrooms, but you're like just. Oh, for after, for sure, after, yeah. It's, after diving, <laughs> it's the closest thing to like a psychedelic experience, and, and you just kind of yeah. A lot of guys talk about um, you know, staring into the dark ocean for for eight hours and just the weird things that start to, um, you know, pop up in your mind. Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, um, yeah. That yeah. Happens. One of the SEAL officers said that he's like, yeah, I stare into stare into the darkness in the ocean for eight hours and you'll find out how weird you really are. I think that's yeah. a great way to say it. <laughs> well, I always wonder that because like, I, I read a lot about like monks and stuff and like how they just don't talk. And I'm like, how's that? Like, how, imagine me not talking. Like, I can't, I'd uh, go nuts, <laughs> <laughs> first of all. <laughs> like, so, I'd be breaking something, but I'm like, how do they do that? Like, they just don't, that's interesting. But anyway, getting back into like more of, um, cause I, I had, I wanted to ask you specifically, um, See, I'm trying to find a good one. Okay, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna. I'm gonna ask you. I'm gonna ask you a couple, and then we'll we'll try to knock them out. For you, what is a goal of yours for 2024, or for your business? Um, 2024 for me, it's just to keep. You know, getting stronger, getting smarter, being open-minded, being more grateful. Um, you know, can continue to work out, continue to eat good, continue to spend more time with loved ones, um, read more. Uh, I think that's always people's like got a main stack, one. Got a stack of books that I yeah I carry around with me, but don't read. Um, uh, yeah, I need to I need to get through a few books. You just got to do like ten pages a day. I know. Ten pages know. a day. I know. Maybe procrastinate less. Um, be more organized. Just be a better person. Just continue to work on myself. Um, that's good. As far as the company, I can't really talk about it on this. I, I've, you can't. I've, it's well, okay. I've alluded to what it is with you offline, but there's right, something right. very um, historically significant that I'm searching for, that we're searching for. Okay. And that, that is 2024 for me. Okay. I want got, to okay. So find, without going into detail, but you do have a business goal for 2024. Oh, yes. And that's good. Yes. There's, there's something okay. that's lost in the sea that's very important to our country it's very important to a lot of people and i would like to find that and do the recovery on that and that sounds it's amazing become, yeah. it's become an obsession and i i think about it all day every day and i want to do it um it's a i mean i'll say it's an aircraft um somewhere in the world mm -hmm. and that's about all i can say about it at this point that's interesting because and when you talk about obsession and um that is something I think is interesting because I think some like really ambitious people to some level get like maybe an unhealthy version of obsessed for sure for certain things for sure like, I mean how's every, that for you everything is about balance I mean if you if you take on a, a small business or any kind of business you're going to you know like I always say why why wouldn't you start a business when you can work four times as hard for a quarter of the money? Right, right. Like, right. You always, um, you're always thinking about it. My eyes open in the morning, and I'm like, oh, emails. Like, you know, always thinking about the business. Um, always trying to network. Always trying to. It's always on my mind. 
up until the point where I close my eyes. And it could very easily, you know, take over your life. So you have to consciously maintain balance. Um, yeah. I mean, obsession is, obsession can destroy you. I mean, look at the story, the Herman Melville novel, Moby Dick. I mean, it, that was a book about obsession. The guy obsessed with the whale and it ultimately killed him. He was mm-hmm. tied to the whale, you know, and finally got got to it and didn't even care that it killed him. He was just happy that he finally, you know, went down with this whale that he was seeking. So I don't want to chase the white whale to my own demise, but right, um, right, yeah, obsession is a dangerous, you know, it's it's a dangerous fire to play with. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's really insightful that you um, that you know that. Well, I'm <laughs> I get like unhealthily obsessed with certain things um but that's how i've been able to accomplish like the things that i've been able to accomplish like for example like even this podcast like i was so obsessed with like podcasting and things like that that my obsession turned into like so much research around it like i was i'm like constantly watching podcasts i'm constantly like taking mental notes of like what they do what they're doing or like what's working algorithms like all kinds of stuff like that to the point where it's like Obviously, I'm learning about it, and that's good in a way, but I my screen time is like 12 hours a day, yeah. or it was. Now o- it's over like... preparing a little bit? Yeah, yeah. Now it's like, it's <laughs> definitely gone down, and I, I set like things on my phone now, but um, probably on my phone, I have about nine hours of screen time a day, and it's like, I know that's so, so unhealthy, and I am slowly like trying to like, okay, where can I like split up this screen time? But it's so hard because I do so much stuff like on social media and then everything's on your phone, right? Emails, my text messages, my mom's calling me. Right. Like it's, it's more than just being on my phone doing one thing. So, but yeah, I, I definitely get obsessed with certain things. I'm you, super obsessed you, with fitness. Are you multitasking though? Like you're doing other things while listening to the podcast and... Yeah, yeah, I'm definitely multitasking. I feel like that's kind of like the art of getting so much done efficiently is like being able to successfully multitask. Sure. Um, Because I don't like to actually procrastinate. That brings me more stress and anxiety Mm. um, than anything else. So I try to get things completed from start to finish as much as possible. I'm driven by the stress produced from (laughs) procrastinating. I'm powered by it. I'm the worst procrastinator. (laughs) Well, I think that comes from, like, my mom always procrastinated, and it bugged the shit out of me, yeah. dude. And I was like, just get it done. And so now I'm like, I just try to get it done. Yeah, 2024 goals for me. So. But, uh, yeah, owning, owning a company, co- co-owning a company is uh, you never feel like you're you're there. You know, no yeah. matter what you do, there's always something else you can do. Yeah. So you just, you're swimming in, in tasks hanging over your head at all Right, times, right. So. Okay. If you do, even I'm glad if you I'm not the only one that no. feels that way. That's good. <laughs> I, don't know. I, I live in the, in the chaos. I do have, okay, so here, actually, one interesting, and, and we kind of talked about this a little bit, because um, we, still, we still have some time, but um, how are you feeling, because you dive, and I'm just curious what your feelings are about, like, contamination and water contamination, since that is, like, a huge thing. You're exposed in the water, you know, you're in the water a lot. And like, here, here we are in... Uh, Red Hill, <laughs> and here we are. Yeah, uh, contamination. Uh, you know, that's fears? a. It is a part of my life. Um, it's some. It's part of the. It's part of the job. Right. Mitigating that risk. Um, you know, you can control those uh, those risks a little bit with. You know, prophylactic antibiotics and vaccinations. I've been pumped up full of so much, so many shots. Um, yeah, living in living in contaminated water is. Uh, that's our our realm you know unfortunately a lot of the times um right you know i've been in you know exposed to fuel and solvents and paints and you know um all kinds of different uh sealants industrial chemicals and and what is your it, fear around that like diving in that stuff all the time or are well, you just I, you know i it is what get it a is. regular liver function test um i mean it's it's probably no more than your average uh, construction worker guy. You, okay. I've always been really strict with my my personal protective equipment. You know, um, that's good. I'd like to I'd like to live to a ripe old age and right, right. Um, you know, I've worked around um, radiation, like high levels of radiation on, on submarines, and mm-hmm. you know, it's it's definitely our our realm, and there are a lot of safety measures in place, and I, 
think you have to be strict and, and adhere to those. Um, need be, you know, we have contamination suits. Like my company has um, these suits made out of vulcanized rubber by um, this company called Viking. I think they're out of Scandinavia. And it's, uh, oh, wow. it's a fully encapsulated suit that snaps into the neck dam of your helmet. And cool. um, I mean, you can dive in diesel. I'm going to go get one. <laughs> so when I go in the ocean, I'm just going to be... I'm going to be uh, wearing this crazy suit and everyone's going to be like, why are you surfing in that? Like, I'm paranoid. I, I'll, let you, I'll let you borrow one. Oh my gosh. When I was in, uh, I was surfing in Imperial Beach, uh, San Diego one time and I was sitting there floating, you know, just waiting for a Come set. Here, and this guy comes up in like a Tyvex chemical suit and opens up this briefcase and uh, had a little vial and he puts it on a stick and he reaches out and like takes a sample of the of the and he had a respirator on and he like took a little sample of the water and closes his briefcase oh and gets in a white van and drives off and i was like oh that i'm not getting that's in the not water. Good. <laughs> yeah that's not good that doesn't sound that's not a that wouldn't give me confidence but no that i was yeah. like maybe i shouldn't be here yeah. but um <laughs> it doesn't sound good he's like a water contamination tracker or something yeah, trying to get he's, statistics yeah, he's, or something right right yeah that's creepy tracking the bacterial levels but um yeah if it gets real bad i mean there, there's a lot of measures well like the aloe like, is, is probably still super contaminated yeah we dove in the we dove in the alley before really yeah they what are you guys um, looking for? hpd wanted us to find a gun so oh, we that's a good place to look actually. yeah the bridge what is it the river street bridge i guess um yeah we dove around looking for that gun and found like seven other guns but not the one they were looking for <laughs> so, <laughs> that's funny yeah good old Diving like this one, this one, this one, this one. They're like, no, none of those are the gun. But the thank you. You solved seven yeah. other Is this things. this one? What about this? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's crazy. No, but wow. thanks. Yeah. I, um, I've heard of like in Chinatown, they used to like fish out of there and like they, what they, restaurant got in trouble for like, I don't know. The, this is this is all stuff I've read. Doesn't but, surprise me at all. So. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So um, yeah, contaminated water. I mean, it's just something that we deal with. I mean, I, I dove in some pretty contaminated parts of um you know uh southeast asia and india and bangladesh and quite you know different um no disrespect for those parts of the world but they have different septic systems and yeah. sanitation and yeah i've been in water with you know bodies and e coli and uh it's just something you learn to learn to mitigate yeah that's that's scary i'd be that'd make me nervous yeah. I'm, I'm like a huge germaphobe, so <laughs> me getting in water. Where did that Where did that all come from? I don't know. That's a great question. <laughs> I'll, ask, I'll ask my therapist to help yeah. me figure that one out. <laughs> <laughs> but I will, I will say about like the red, I know you're, I know you're leading me towards wanting to ask me about Red Hill. And... Yeah, a little bit. Just your thoughts well, on the contamination. Yeah, the first thing I did when I got to Hawaii, when I moved here in the 90s, is I, I read the James A. Missioner book. Hawaii, mm-hmm. it's titled Hawaii, mm-hmm. and the first um, chapter, uh, you know, he talks about this amazing, very articulate, descriptive um, formation, the, the volcanic activity that, that forms these islands, and oh, you know, right, how right. it, you know, triumphantly ro- rose from the sea, and you know, he talked about how um, the geological formation of, of the island, and, and and how, um, and at, at the end of the chapter, he says, like, what, what makes the island so special is it's a natural catchment, you know, mm-hmm. um, yeah. and then covered in a, in a capstone of, of um, porous rock. Yeah. I mean, the, the catchment here, or the, the watershed, as we call it here, is like the most, one of the most special things on this planet. You know, yeah. it, so like if a drop of water hits, you know, the, the land, it'll take 100 years and filter into this watershed. And it's actually under pressure. So it doesn't have to be pumped out. If you could just tap into it, it actually flows out naturally. So it pops out in different cracks in, right. in the mountains. And there's just, it, it, it allows, a, um, the watershed allows for, you know, supporting a large population on this island. And without it, you know, we have like basically an, a perfect system and unlimited right. um, water supply. Yeah, which, almost like it's its own generated ecosystem, yeah, basically. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, I think it's, it's, it's really fascinating, like, that we so the, even live on this island, like, so and that it's even possible. One of our, you know, country's greatest authors, you know, wrote a book about Hawaii, and he said the most special thing about Hawaii is that watershed. It really makes you kind of stop and think, like, I mean, it, and Hawaii is one of the 
most special places on this planet. So yeah, definitely. Uh, that, that, that's something that makes this this planet and really our solar system special is if you really think about how special that watershed is, it's like that's interesting, you think yeah. about the entire solar system. I mean, that watershed is one of the most amazing things on, on all the planets. So, mm -hmm. I mean, if you if you destroy the rings of Saturn, I mean, how tragic is that? Like, who is that important to and why is that special? I mean, I, yeah, I think yeah. if that's not if, if something that makes this planet unique um, isn't special, then, then what the hell is? That's interesting. I'm surprised so we, we, I, we almost need like, yeah, we almost need like a part two to talk about space. <laughs> <laughs> well, we didn't even get into, um, yeah, cause yeah, I, too much of diving. Yeah. I feel we'll, like we let's did. do a part two. I'll do a, a part two. Yeah. I feel like we need a part two, but definitely I'm, I'm, I'm glad that, I mean, clearly it makes sense that you think Hawaii is special, but it really bugs me. My girlfriend and I were talking about this. It really bugs me a lot when people like say that they hate Hawaii and can't like appreciate things here because I feel like that's, that becomes a you problem. Like it has nothing to do with the island at all because there's so much of this island that's even like undiscovered and unseen, even from me. Like my friend was making fun of me because I didn't know about this hike. And I was like, well, I don't know about it because I've never done it. That's what's great about this you know? island. I've, I've been here over 25 years and... I'm still exploring things like, you know, yep, my exactly. my wife and kids will go to some new. And then now with the ocean, place like that I, we've never seen before. And it's like, oh, wow, yeah, I, never I haven't even ocean. explored even clo like close to anything if in regards to that, because there's so much edges that you can't even be near because it's so dangerous. So it's like well, now there's only so many different edges I can be around. I mean, Jacques Cousteau never scratch the surface of what's in the ocean i mean that's what's great about the ocean i mean it it is scary and it is terrifying and i think that's what always draws me back to it it's always going to be exciting mm -hmm. and things are always going to pop out at you right right there's always adventure around the corner and you never know um you never know what the ocean there's always bring. a blue whale but waiting to swim by you <laughs> it could be, or whatever yeah. scare the man, shit out of you <laughs> man i didn't Nothing makes we need a part two. I didn't, I didn't get to tell you my shark story. I didn't get to tell yeah, you. Yeah, we need um, a part two. <laughs> should we pause and then uh, then pick it up? Yeah, we can. <laughs> we can. Thank I was you, worried. everybody, for tuning in to this podcast that we now created. <laughs> We're now deciding is going to probably be a part two. The warm-up. Yeah, I was like, geez, I wonder if I'm going to be able to talk for an hour. And I, I don't even think I we got I told you, an hour is easy. It's yeah, it's when you are a boring person, then you can't talk for an hour, but we're not boring. But um, no, thank you so much for tuning in to Lucy's Paradise podcast. I'm stoked to have uh, to be able to have Nick today and I'm excited for a part two. Absolutely. It's be Looking awesome. forward to it. Yeah. See you soon. Good thank job. you so much. Yay.